Hey guys, Level Cap here, and Epic have launched the next chapter of Fortnite. They took the gaming world by storm this week, shutting down the game servers with a black hole event. Players who were in game when the event happened were actually sucked into a black hole. Fortnite's social media accounts and players around the world streamed the event waiting for something to happen. Millions upon millions of people tuned in for nearly 48 hours. Major news outlets around the world covered the events. Millions of people could not play Fortnite. Some of them read books. Some of them made progress towards their life goals. It was just pandemonium. But finally, Chapter 2 launched around 4 a.m. Eastern Time this morning with a brand new map. It looks a lot like the old one, but features a bunch of new locations and a full river system that players can swim in and drive boats around on. A lot of tweaks have been made to the game's progression to make it feel less grindy, and many of the more overpowered weapons have been vaulted. In a lot of ways, Epic have taken Fortnite back to the basics. That's kind of been the whole point of the game's recent marketing and events. For the past few months, many players have grown frustrated with Epic continually adding new weapons, items, and mechanics that fundamentally change how matches play out. It came to a head with the addition of the mechs to the game. At launch, the mech could just obliterate players, even those with full shields. It was a massive change to the game meta that came out of nowhere. With the game now back to a more basic and fresh state, it feels like a refresh of the entire game. Everyone is learning the new map, so there's no go-to spots yet or high loot locations that everyone's gonna play out every single round. While you can now upgrade weapons with crafting materials, there isn't necessarily a laundry list of exotics and absurd weapons at your disposal. Everything seems simplified. For the core players that play day in and day out, this is probably a welcome change of direction. Now when it comes to releasing a new map, Epic have reinvented the wheel. Comparing Chapter 2's launch to the Season 3 rollout for Apex is almost night and day. Apex got players both loyal and on the fence excited about the game again, but it didn't have the 4.2 million concurrent viewers watching a black hole on YouTube. Epic turned what was over 24 hours of game downtime into one of the most watched and talked about gaming events Ever. It's kind of crazy to think about how genius it was to actually just shut the game down for an extended period of time, and that in itself created more buzz and marketing than just about anything else could have. Now marketing aside, what does the actual new chapter play like? Obviously Epic doesn't want to drive away the people who enjoy their core gameplay, and they certainly have it. Things are not drastically changed in terms of how you build things or how you engage enemy players. Pacing still feels relatively on point. Dropping into an area with decent loot will get you a gun pretty quickly. In most starting areas, you can get about two or three kills, I'd say if you're an average player, before moving out into the rest of the world. In solos, mid-round pacing can feel a little bit on the slow side. You'll go several minutes without seeing or hearing another player often. When you do, they're either too far away to do anything about it or throwing up buildings to get to you as fast as possible. Fortnite in general doesn't seem designed for mid to long range fighting, and that hasn't changed with Chapter 2. All the usual strats of getting in close and spraying enemies down with shotguns definitely still apply. And the map overall should still feel very familiar even if you haven't played Fortnite in a while. It's quite similar to the old one. It has the rural countryside look and feel with towns and small urban areas scattered throughout the map. When you first launch the game, you'll be greeted by a quick cinematic introducing the new season followed immediately by being thrown into a match. The entire map will be grayed out as you explore it. Named areas will be discovered for you, revealing their name on the map and filling in the gray areas. Finding these locations ties into the game's new challenge system. You can keep track of your challenge progress with a new challenge punch card visible in game. Doing specific tasks like looting chests, downing enemy players, getting kills with particular guns will reward you with XP. As you level up, items included in the Chapter 2 Battle Pass will unlock. As usual, there's a free and paid tier, with paid progression offering more rewards per level. Also, you can fish now. Grabbing a fishing rod takes up a slot in your inventory, but you can catch high value items by fishing. So it's probably worth the time to catch a few fish at the start of a round or in the slower mid game. 
Fish also act as healing items. Throughout certain areas of the map, you'll also find barrels that are full of shield goo, the same ones found in shield regen items. Breaking these open will give you a bit of shield. Official patch notes aren't available for the Chapter 2 update yet, so it's not clear exactly what the update has changed when it comes to balancing out items and weapons or what's been added or removed. But aside from the new map, boats, challenges, and fishing, there's a new bandage bazooka that lets you shoot healing bandages at teammates. You can now pick up down teammates and enemies and carry them to safety for a revive or away from their teammates. There are 13 new named locations with some additional ones returning from the original map. Also, you can now hide in barrels, apparently, getting a little bit of solid snake action in here. And the UI has been updated quite a bit. As for weapons, pump and tactical shotguns return. Standard assault rifles are back. There's also burst rifles and the new AUG burst rifle. SMGs are back, so are bolt action snipers, and of course, rocket launchers. The standard four tiers of weapon rarity are still in play, but you can now upgrade your weapons at the upgrade stations scattered across the map. These will take any purple or lesser rarity item and upgrade them to the next highest tier. You can repeatedly upgrade the same weapon too. So if you're stuck with a gray assault rifle but have a ton of crafting supplies, you could potentially end up with a gold gun. Shotguns also drop from the chest now. Considering that they're one of the most essential weapons in the game, it's a welcome change. The new boat vehicle is pretty basic, especially compared to the game's previous vehicles like planes and mechs, but you can still use it to get around on land if you need to. Unlike the original map, Chapter 2's new map doesn't have multiple biomes. It's mostly open green areas with some mountains and coastal regions thrown in. Assuming Epic continues adding to the map as they did with the original, it's only a matter of time before we see significant changes like new locations and biomes being added. Part of what gave Fortnite such long-term appeal was the constant stream of new content coming out for it. And despite huge success in breaking all kinds of player records, Apex Legends has failed to hold people's attention for as long as Fortnite has. Epic are constantly adding new content to the game, hyping it up with events and making dramatic changes to the weapons and mechanics. It makes Fortnite feel fresh to new and returning players alike. Of course, that also comes with the rumors of how Epic overworks their employees and potentially makes it a an unfun work environment to stay on top of patches and game updates. Behind the scenes stuff aside, it does seem like Fortnite was beginning to wear on players who felt that the game was getting too far removed from its original design. Refreshing the entire game with a new map and stripped down mechanics gives Epic a great starting point to rediscover what Fortnite is about at its core. Many games fall into these traps of bloating, adding too much content, making it too intimidating for new players to get into because of the new complexities and shifts in gameplay and style. And this is a great excuse to bring everything back. Not all games have the ability to do that, and it's kind of cool that Fortnite can. It is tough to say yet how players will react to Chapter 2. As someone who hasn't really played Fortnite much since its original launch, it does seem somewhat overwhelming if I were to dive into the game in the middle of Season 10. Chapter 2 gives everyone a chance to get back into Fortnite without having a mountain of new things to relearn. Now, where Epic plans to take the game from here is anyone's guess. It's likely that they'll start to ramp things back up with new vehicles, new biomes, new areas, new events in the near future. This was a highly successful marketing campaign, but it seems like they've realized it's just not sustainable, so hitting the reset button seemed like a good solution. Hopefully though, they've learned that changing things just for the sake of changing them isn't always the best move and has had negative consequences on the game. Fortnite is at its best when it's just players building zany cover and shooting at each other. All of the extraneous stuff that Epic seems to add beyond that just seems to flatten out the skill curve and make the game more obnoxious in the end to play. If you've been on the fence about getting into Fortnite or maybe you were put off by previous updates, Chapter 2 might be a good time to dive back in. It's got the benefit of years of refinement and optimization that the game is known for, but it's stripped down to its most basic and arguably the most fun elements. 
Anyway, that wraps it up for the launch of Fortnite Chapter 2. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of Chapter 2. Have you been playing it? Have you been enjoying it? Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.